Picture this, Novak Djokovic is down two sets to love in a slam match against a high-flying player 10 years younger than him. Novak isn't playing at his best and his opponent is hitting the best shots of his life. At that point, who would you back to win the match? How many times have we seen it happen? Just when you think he's down and out, Novak Djokovic always finds a way and the will to do so when it matters most at the age of 35. As a result, the single question on everyone's mind is, how much longer? How long can Djokovic remain on top? Difficult question, but we'll attempt to answer it by breaking it down into tiny little bits, and we kick off by paying tributes to the big three. As tennis fans, we've been spoiled by their insane consistency throughout their careers. With Federer retired already, Djokovic and Nadal are the old guards left to fight off the impressible, younger generation. Being a year younger than the King of Clay, and with the momentum in his favour, Djokovic seems poised to outlast Nadal, who has had lots of troubles with his body. I am a, a player living with, uh, with an injury, that's it. And on. But we know better not to write off Nadal, which is why Djokovic's stay on top could be very well threatened by a resurgent Nadal. On the flip side, Nadal's continued presence may also continue to motivate Djokovic to remain playing at the highest level, seeing that they are in a race for who's going to end up with the highest number of Grand Slam titles. But aside from his biggest rival, there are more worries for the Serbian man. The 21-time Slam winner is probably one of the most health-conscious guys to ever hold the racket. His unique views and practices on diet, medicine and science have no doubt contributed to his longevity. I, I start with uh, warm water and lemon so I can help my body detoxify. But even at that, we are beginning to see some cracks in his fitness. Cracks which could be age-related or probably due to some condition, like he suggested last year. You know, everyone has one of those days where they struggle more physically. For me, that was today. Yep, it seems as though Djokovic is beginning to suffer more than before physically. We've seen him struggle with dizziness and heat exhaustion, and then there are injury scares here and there. We recently saw one at the just concluded Adelaide Open. It was happening, but I just felt uh, I felt uh, pulling on, on the hamstring and I needed some... Surely a time will come when his body will no longer be able to carry on, but there's no telling when that is. Luckily, he has been able to avoid career-ending injuries so far, but it's only going to get harder. Another deciding factor in Novak Djokovic's longevity is his vaccination status. We all know what happened last year. Top-ranked tennis player Novak Djokovic faces deportation after the Australian government. From being infamously detained and deported from Australia to missing two slam events, four Masters 1000 and several other tournaments. Because of his light schedule, he dropped from world number one to seven and had to build back his form and even play in the smaller tournaments just to qualify for the ATP finals. Now the thing is, vaccination laws can change for the better or for the worse. In Djokovic's case, he already been welcomed back with open arms into Australia. They love you, we love you. Thank you, Novak. You're through to the fourth round. Ladies and gentlemen, Novak Djokovic. But it's not yet the same case in the United States as at the time of this recording. Moreover, the Serbian has already made his stand clear that he'll remain unvaccinated. Not being vaccinated today, I, you know, I'm unable to travel to most of the tournaments. That's his choice. This invariably means that his schedule for the year is no longer straightforward, and it'll be dependent on certain health policies and laws. Not playing because of this results in a slippery slope, loss of ranking points, loss of form, and probably loss of motivation if care is not taken. Fortunately for Novak, he's hard as nails and has an undying passion to continue playing at the highest level. Also, there's the not-so-small matter of Wimbledon ranking points counting last year for reasons you already know, with Djokovic a clear favourite and Wimbledon. If it continues that way, his number of weeks spent at the top of the pile would be affected more than anyone else. Hopefully, things can change for the better at the All England Club. We've seen priorities start to change for players in their 30s. For those who haven't started a family at that time, they are often eager to start one, get married, have kids, and spend more time with their loved ones. Sometimes the change is drastic. Other times it is a smooth transition. In Djokovic's case, he already got married in 2014 and has two kids, but a lot can change within a short time, which means that we cannot effectively rule out the significance or impact of family or a change in priority on his career at this point. We've seen the greatest players lose interest in the game at some point, Becker, 
Agassiz, Philander, Curia. Once that occurs, one of two things happens. Either they later experience a reawakening or they are toast. But like he has done throughout his career, I'm quite certain that he's going to find the balance. Uh, when I get back home, I'm not a tennis player, I'm a husband and a father, and it's a, just a completely different chapter in my life. Talking about adapting to changes, no one does it better than Djokovic, which brings us to the next point. Only a few players have evolved like Djokovic. Here's how best I remember him. A physically and somewhat mentally frail Novak grinding it out. This version is still successful, but is nothing compared to the older ones. A new and improved machine coming off age and competing with arch rivals at the highest level, racking up majors and setting records. A scary monster destroying almost everyone in his path. I mean, this guy had 31 match wins against top 10 players in 2015 and had an insane record of 16,950 ranking points the following year amongst other incredible records. An older but more complete and more intelligent player schooling the younger generation with this style of play. Time and again, the 35-year-old has reinvented himself and risen to new levels of success. Djokovic's latest resurgence can be attributed to his careful selection of tournaments, coaching, health and recovery, and experience over the years. Between each version of Djokovic, we can see a one or two year gap where he found things more difficult. For example, in the later part of 2012 and 2013, he was troubled more often than not by Rafael Nadal and Andy Murray. Andy Murray is the Wimbledon champion. Until he flipped the switch. Again in the 2017 and early part of the 2018 season, injuries and surgeries kept him from being his best until he had to shake things up again. It's a long period, you know, it was a forced break due to an injury that I carried uh, for. If he can evolve at least one more time and squeeze out whatever juice is left, he can dominate everyone for a few more years. Year in and year out, it is the same story. We could probably single out 10 top guys who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Djokovic on a good day. Daniel Medvedev, Stefanos Tsitsipas, Nick Kyrgios, Kaspar Ruud, Rublev, Carlos Alcaraz, Holger Roon, Felix Auger, Taylor Fritz, Sinner, Alexander Zverev. Barring occasional successes against the Serb, most of them have come off worse. It always seems like they are missing something Djokovic has. Is it the mentality? Is it the experience? Novak Djokovic has made a career out of beating the younger crop of players, teaching them lessons, and making them look inadequate despite their obvious talents. I never said this to anybody, but I'll say it right now. For me, you are the greatest uh, tennis player in the history. Of course, it's not going to continue forever. Rune and Alcarath already reminded us that Novak is still human. Bet I had forgotten at some point. Both of these players won him last year by being pretty aggressive and maintaining high levels of confidence throughout the match. If Novak's health slowly declines or his priorities shift, then it'll become easier for one of these exceptional players to take over his throne. 373 weeks at the top of the ATP rankings, 21 slams, including double career slam. Your seventh Wimbledon title, your 21st Grand Slam title. 38 Masters 1000 titles with double career Golden Masters, 6 ATP Finals titles, 92 titles won and counting, 7-time year-end world number one, 7 ATP Player of the Year awards, it's an unending list of achievements. Come on man, give this dude his flowers. He has shown unbelievable consistency, versatility and dominance on all surfaces. No obvious weaknesses in his game. You wouldn't be wrong to call Djokovic the most complete player of all time. Knowing the kind of person Novak is, he must be thinking to himself that life is just beginning at 35. That's the kind of mindset he has. He remains focused and hungry for more success. He's a single-minded individual who knows exactly how to motivate himself. The power comes from within and that I can change everything inside, whatever is happening outside. Which is why one of the scariest things for opponents will probably be when he's doing some pep talk or taking his famous toilet breaks because you know that when he's done, you'll be playing a completely different player. With all that he has achieved in his career, Novak Djokovic has since staked his GOAT claim in tennis. But there's only so long a champion can remain the greatest. So here's what I'd love to think. No doubt, Djokovic has more in the tank. 
On some days, his best tennis gives him the win. On other days, it is his experience, mentality, desire and determination. The next-gen players are pushing Novak closer and closer to his limits every tournament, and it won't be surprising to see one of them break out. But for now, Djokovic remains the man to beat. With no signs of slowing down at the moment, I'd love to give Djokovic three or four more years at the top, and at least four or five more slams for a couple of reasons. If anyone can bloom in his mid to late 30s, it's Djokovic. Will he stay healthy and fresh? More likely than not. Will he win against top opponents? Yep. That's going to happen from the look of things. Surpassing the all-time record for the number of singles titles, as well as many other records, is a bet. We are all lucky to be watching Novak Djokovic now. The future is uncertain, and whether he smashes this prediction or falls short, we'll have to revisit this conversation again in the future. But for now, the king is destined to reign. What do you think? Meanwhile, here are some things you didn't know about the other active goat in tennis.